What if I told you that you could make a video game in under a month? Well, this month I was invited by Matthew Palahay to join him and musician Soundzu to create a game in under a month as part of Matthew's Game A Month series. So this month we developed and released Blade Construct, a sci-fi stealth action game where you are equipped with nothing but a neon blade and must carefully traverse each level to defeat all of the guards without being seen. The game is currently available for download on Matthew's Itch page. Please be sure to check it out and let us know your thoughts. I'll leave the link in the description. So for this game, I was responsible primarily for the characters. And in this video, I'd like to walk you all through my process for designing a character to having him appear in game, all while on a very tight schedule. So first, let's start off with the enemy soldier. These guys appear in game as these ominous patrolling figures. They are very strong and powerful, and you, as the player, aren't very strong in comparison to them. So your best bet to taking these guys out is sneaking up behind them and stabbing them in their weak spot. So when making a character, I always start off with a design. So I hopped right into Photoshop to draw up some concepts. This soldier character was inspired heavily by the Guardians in Destiny and the Spartans in Halo, as those are both games I myself am very fond of. When it comes to character design, one thing I find most important is a strong silhouette and colour scheme. So I made sure that the shoulders were very distinctive and the helmet shape wasn't too vague, so that you could tell what it is you were dealing with from a distance and in low lighting. As for the colour scheme, I like to use a tool called Adobe Colour, which I'll link down below. And this is a very interesting tool, where you can generate a colour scheme from an image. So I used some of the images that Matt had sent over to me for inspiration, and I popped them into Adobe Colour, and used those colours as my base. And you can see on the left side of this concept, I've used primarily blue and white to fill in this soldier, but then later went more for a white, red and gold look. Still using that shade of blue, however, for the highlights. So after we settled on the character design, I then moved on to the modelling phase. For those that aren't familiar with 3D terms, modelling is the process of turning the character from a 2D concept to a 3D piece of geometry. For modelling, I like to use a free modelling program called Blender, which I'll link down in the description if you want to try it out. Before I start the model, I first like to import some anatomical reference images to keep the character in proportion. For the sake of time, I just grabbed some images from Google and set them up in my scene, at approximately the height the character was going to be. To start the model, I just take a simple box and then subdivide the box to create more vertices around the model. And these vertices are very important, as those are what guide the shape of the geometry. So after subdividing the box and getting some more vertices in, I then move the vertices around to resemble the shape of the reference image. It's almost like 3D tracing, if you will. This technique is quite common and it tends to save you a lot of time, especially if you aren't too confident with proportions, like I was for a long time. And I'll tell you, it's never fun building a model from scratch and then realizing that the entire thing is completely out of proportion and having to redo hours of work. So make sure when modeling anything, this could apply to characters, weapons, props, that you have a strong reference image to use. You can make a reference image yourself, or if you'd like to save on time, there are plenty of base human reference images available online. While modeling this particular character, I made sure to pay very close attention to the edge flow of the model. Edge flow is the direction that the edge loops travel around the model, and it's a good thing to be able to select an edge loop and have it loop around the entire model without interruptions. Good edge flow not only makes texturing easier, but animation as well. And you can see here I spent quite a lot of time making sure that the edge flow was just right on the model. For this particular design of Soldier, you can see that his armor pieces come in chunks. He's got a shoulder piece, a leg piece, a body piece, and a helmet. So when modelling this character, I decided to just focus on the base first, meaning modelling just his body and the undersuit. 
It wasn't until afterwards I decided to model on the armor pieces as separate objects. Doing things this way would also make it much easier if you plan to have multiple characters in your game. And if you wanted to create a different kind of soldier for example, I could just take the same base model I've made already and add different armor pieces to it. Another thing as well you might notice about each piece I've modeled for this character is that oftentimes, if the model is symmetrical, you only really have to model one half of it. As Blender, or most other 3D programs, have a very handy tool called the Mirror Tool, and this allows you to mirror one side of the mesh to the other. So when designing your first character, try and be a bit smart about it, because if you can design your character symmetrically, then it'll, in the most literal sense, cut your workload in half. So after I finalized the model, I then moved on to the texturing phase. And for those that don't know, before you can start texturing a model, you need to go through the process of UV unwrapping. Unwrapping isn't particularly my favorite part of the process, but luckily, Blender's unwrapping tools are very well developed. I completed this part quite easily by marking seams in the appropriate spots on the model. Typically, I like to place my seams in places where the player won't see, and in places that separate each part of the body. So for example, around the wrists, along the neck, around the hips, and along the insides of the legs. After marking your seams for Blender, you can simply hit the unwrap button and it'll automatically try and unfold the model's geometry onto a flat 2D texture. And then only after that point is it ready to be textured. For the texturing process, I thought this time instead of using Photoshop, I'd give a crack at Substance Painter. And while I was a bit slow to learn how it worked, it was a much more enjoyable process for me in comparison to the traditional texturing workflow. Substance Painter, for those who don't know, is a 3D PBR texturing program. And unlike the traditional process of laying out the texture and painting inside the UV map, you can just have the model there in the editor and paint onto it directly. So when I booted up Substance, I started by just painting on the base colors, color picking from the concept art. And after setting those up, I then added some other smaller details, such as changing the metallic properties of the materials and using procedural masks to get that scratch metal look. And finally, I added an emissive property to the armor and the visor to get that ominous glowing effect. After that was finished, I then exported out the maps from Substance and exported out the model to give to Matthew. He then worked his auto rigging and animation magic and implemented the character beautifully into the game. While the game was in its early prototype phase, Matthew had modeled a quick energy sword for the player to hold and use for attacks. For the final version, we thought it would be best to have a custom animated arm with an attack animation as well as a more concealable stealthy weapon. So I got to work on making that next. To make the arm, I simply cut off the base arm from the enemy soldier I had made earlier. And then modeling the dagger took no time at all. I made sure to keep the topology simple and when texturing, I decided to give it a sleek neon edge to fit better with the sci-fi Blade Runner aesthetic of the game. With the player's hand, I decided to animate it manually. When animating a model, you usually have to go through the process of rigging. So you'd have to set up a series of bones, which most 3D programs are capable of doing, and then skin the geometry of the character to the bones. For my case, the rigging process was very quick as I only had to focus on the arm and hand and not the entire body. And normally I'd spend a lot of time fine tuning the blend weights of the skin to the bones. But luckily, Blender has very robust tools and the auto weights that it had generated seemed to work just fine as they were. After rigging, I made a start on the idle resting pose for the hand. And to make things easier to implement, I set up a camera approximately near where the character's head would be to see how the animations would look from a first person perspective. After making the idle pose, it became much easier to craft the rest of the animations. I wasn't sure how much time we'd have to implement them, but for good measure I made a stabbing animation for when the player attacks, a run animation, and an idle animation. After that, I then exported the model out with his animations and sent them over to Matthew for implementation. So as you can see here, we have Blade Construct. This is what the final game ended up looking like, and you can see we have the enemy soldiers patrolling around in the background there. So let's jump into a level. Now you can see when we load in, we're first greeted by Matthew's beautiful environment, 
and Sound Zoo's banger soundtrack, as well as my first person arm with the dagger. See if I click the mouse, it'll swing the dagger, and it's got a nice little sound effect on that. So let's take a walk. So you can see from above here, we have a nice view of the level. And if we drop down and crouch through here, you can see there's our first encounter with the soldier. We have to be really careful here because if he sees us, we are screwed. You can see on his back, there's a little glowing part. So if we stab that, it'll uh, eliminate him. You can see he drops a weapon. Now I believe Matthew modeled this gun for an earlier version of the game, but decided to, instead of giving the player the gun to shoot, we thought we'd equip him with the knife to make the gameplay a bit more stealthy. The good thing about this though is that we can use it as a distraction for the patrolling soldiers. So if I throw that over over there, whoop, let's see if I try that again. So if I throw it over there, you can see he is alerted and it seems that he spotted me. So let's uh, give him a stab. And there we go. So I won't spoil the rest of it for you. If you'd like to check it out, I've got the game linked in the description of this video. Be sure to try it out and let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you'd like to see the behind the scenes development of the gameplay and programming and level design, I've linked Matthew's video as well, where he talks about all the parts of the process that he was involved in. So there you have my side of development for Blade Construct. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope this video gives you a bit of insight on how to start making characters of your own. And I hope that we proved after all that you can and did make a game in under a month. So if you'd like to try out our prototype, I've linked Matthew's itch page below where you can download the game for free. Be sure to give it a play and let us know your thoughts in the comments. I'd like to take a moment to thank this month's top tier supporters on Patreon for helping support the production of these videos. As always, if you'd like to see more content from me on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next upload. And of course, you can catch me in all corners of the internet. Be sure to follow my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or join the community Discord to see more frequent updates from me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.